radio.com and the word radio app. Run that back. And we are back with Reality Check, and today is Super Tuesday, and uh, that means that people all across the nation are casting their ballots in primaries for both the Republicans and the Democrats, and this is the Tuesday that really sets into motion uh, things for the November presidential election, where it is expected that President Joe Biden will run once again against former President Donald Trump. I mean, what a time to be alive. Uh, <laughs> and we are here today with P.O.C. She is the host of Eco Words, and uh, she is here to provide a millennial moment and a millennial perspective on this election. How you doing, P.O.C.? Hey, happy Super Tuesday. Yep, yep. You already know what time it is, man. I appreciate you, Tanya, um, for having me on this Tuesday. Super Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, well, here's the thing. Is it super for millennials? I mean, that's why I was making a joke, honestly. Um, it's, it's a joke, you know. It's, it's kind of a mockery, you know, when you really sit back and you think about uh, the type of politics we have right now, um, especially on the federal level. I mean, on the local level, state levels, we're doing it big all across the United States, right? Um, especially with the Senate, the Senate race, you know, it's a lot of things that are also happening. Um, but when it comes down to this presidential election, it is very, um, you know, laughable. It's, it's something that we can just shake our heads at. And I think when it comes down to the next generation of adults, we're like, yeah, OK, how can we take this serious? Well, you know, the thing is, uh, you, older people were young once. Right. That's so. Real. How do how do you get to the place where you are now looking at uh, these, you know, listen, I'm older, I can't lie, but these are two <laughs> old guys and they're really up there for presidential candidates. They are Joe Biden is 80 and uh, Donald Trump is 77. Yeah. And so they will be well into their 80s if either one of them uh, makes it through a full four years. No, no disrespect to them, but, you know, life expectancy being what it is. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about casting a vote in this election? I mean, if you actually look at what's happening right now, a lot of people are casting um, uncommitted. You know, so Joe Biden is actually, you know, winning the Democratic uh ticket automatically but at the same time people are showing like hey if you don't do something about this i'm showing you right now on super tuesday i'm uncommitted so don't think you know you know when it comes november you're just automatically going to get my vote so i think when it comes down to specifically what you're asking about their age i think they're going to have to wake up and understand that that millennial vote or that next generation of you know adults that vote is really going to have to count. Um, so I think they're going to have to use some type of strategy to really uh, get to the next generation uh, to really see what they can do, especially when it comes down to this war. A lot of people uh, are focusing on what the next president is going to do when it comes to this war. And a lot of millennials are emotionally wrapped up in it. You feel me? So um, I think that they are really going to have to do something about that for sure. You know, I think it's interesting that uh, the conflict in Gaza has really galvanized young people only mm -hmm. because of the fact that there are conflicts going on all over the world. Right now, Haiti yeah. uh, has descended into chaos, basically. We've got armed gangs uh, in Haiti. That country is basically, uh, at this point, non-functional, and women are taking the brunt of this yeah. uh, because these men are running the country and d raping and pillaging from what reports have said. Um, why is it, though, that Gaza has been the conflict? You know, there's a war in Ukraine. There's things going on in the Congo. What is it about the Gaza conflict that has young voters really upset? Um, and this is just my opinion, you know, and that's why we also always have a telephone line for you to give us a call and join the conversation. Um, but for me, I think the opinion is because the uh, religious uh, attachment to it, you know, when mm -hmm. it comes down to people and how you're utilizing their First Amendment, their very strong about that whether it's the freedom of speech or freedom of religion so i right. think that when it comes down to younger voters they want to be respected for who they are you know and that's why right. we have a lot of different policies and advocacy teams showing up for different <laughs> situations as people who are younger are speaking up for who they are and how they see themselves and they want to be represented um and they want to see that representation you feel me so i think that uh, the religious piece in that, which is part of the First Amendment, is playing a really big part uh, for, for, so, for so the young So it's the voters. fact that it, it, it appears that there is one group, uh, religious group, although we're, we're really talking about the Israeli government here, mm -hmm. but they are uh, Jewish. Mm -hmm. um, 
presumably, and that the people that uh, they are having conflict with are Muslim for the most part, uh, that that is part of the reason why people feel as though they're being um, targeted on religious grounds. Yeah, that part. So that's interesting. And I, I think you could thought, give, yeah, I'm sorry to make a troll. No, I was going to say, I would have thought that it would it would be the shared uh, shared feeling of oppression that would be the thing that is galvanizing young people when it comes to that war, that there are people who feel that there are parallel, parallels in the Palestinian struggle mm -hmm. along with the black struggle. And what about for your generation? What do you think your generation is feeling, if you don't mind me asking? When it comes Radio. to that war, com. This event that is brought to you by City Winery and the Pennsylvania that Lottery that in partnership with Bayou Lounge and Bar. By a powerful Bringing in top talent is as easy as one, two, key. Except a key advantage. Toward an election uh, where we are electing another federal administration, where you're thinking about, you know, I, I did a segment yesterday and I was talking about an anniversary of uh, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King's Poor People's Campaign that took place in 1968. They were organizing to put together this campaign, a march on Washington that was going to bring all these people together from multi racial uh, parts of the community. Mm -hmm. And of course, he was assassinated um, a month later. And the thing that was interesting to me about it was that you found I found out just in my research that there was something the FBI, a federal agency, yeah. had called the Ghetto Informant Program. <laughs> I knew about going. I knew about COINTELPRO. I think a lot of people knew, knew about, about COINTELPRO, yeah. but there was a Ghetto Informant Program. And I this didn't was know that. Sanctioned, <laughs> right? Sanctioned by the federal government. So Jay our Edgar skepticism, Hoover, man, I swear. <laughs> exactly. And so the skepticism that people have about about the federal government is understandable. However, the fact that when we, as Word, as a team, went to the White House to broadcast- Congratulations and, and on to, that too. Yeah, absolutely. And, and got to sit down with some of the people in the administration. When you see people one-on-one -on -one like that, I mean, you know, there are people who are really trying to make the world a better place and that mm -hmm. is the path that they chose to do it. And there, there is money in the federal government for people if they can access it. Now, we know some people accessed it through the PPP <laughs> and they didn't do what they were supposed to do. Some people did, but there mm -hmm. were other people who figured out how to get access to the money. You know, th there are ways to do it without lying That's and, and, and defrauding the government. So, AKA kinda... this, this election we have, you know, and I think that that's what goes back to our conversation of like, why most uh you know most of the younger generation as far as when it comes down to voting they you know don't take it as serious because the the fraud that comes along with it you know um just the hypocrisy in general you know the fact that we are having a repeat of 2020 is crazy the fact that we're talking about Donald Trump Radio.com. This event is brought to you by City Winery and the Pennsylvania Republican Lottery and in partnership then, you know, with Bayou Lounge and Bar. Today, like literally today, like bringing in top talent uh, is as easy as out, one, you know, two, you know, key. You know, Except a key advantage. The actual, you know, front runner. And I think that that is just like, where are we? What time are we? Go it goes back to your statement when you first came in. Like, what a time to be alive. <laughs> I mean, it's it's unfathomable that we have someone who is going to very likely after tonight have the Republican nomination. Uh, 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 he's going to lock it down. Mm -hmm. And this is someone who is facing four cases, two of which he's already lost mm -hmm. uh, the civil cases, the one with the city uh, state of New York and the one with E. Jean Carroll defaming her not once, but not twice. That's <laughs> after he was also uh uh, found to have sexually assaulted her. This that is someone part. who is running for president, president, leader of the free free world, still has the case in Georgia that although that's been clouded by all these other allegations mm -hmm, and yeah. this relationship and blah, 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 uh, still has a path to the highest office in the land. There's I would love be... to talk about that too one day, Tanya. You know, what does that mean for a black woman who holds a position, you know, uh, or a standard uh based on her position of, and she cannot have a personal life like what does that look like because i feel like as mm. times are changing you know i feel like that is going to change and i think we see that in, in our music as well but i don't think that um we can continue to portray a certain image i don't like the image that's being portrayed um but i do think that women should be able to have a, a personal life if they have a, a you know, a, a position, I don't want to say a position of power, but they hold a, a standard position in which they make, you know, decisions, 
you know. But I don't want right. to turn the subject today, though. I'm just saying I would love to yeah, talk no, about that. No, I, I, we definitely should because I think that there's a real point in that, yeah. and that's part of what played out in the in the Fonnie Willis case, who, who is uh, the prosecutor that we're talking about. Exactly. But uh, the thing that I want to know from you as a millennial is the Biden Harris administration seems to not have their messaging connecting with young people. What is mm. it that you think that they would have to do or show to make you feel better about casting your vote for them? <laughs> Everything that they said they were going to do in 2020, Tanya. <laughs> you know what I right, mean? Right. Um, when it comes down to these student loans, it's a really big deal for us. Like we are in debt up to here, you know, when it comes down to the fact that we are not making um, the standard. Uh, what am What am I trying to say? We're not making the amount in which the standard of living cost in order for us to survive in today's time. Um, that's an right. issue for us. Yes, there's jobs. You know, there's unemployment is down. Jobs are increasing, but the money isn't there. You know what I'm saying? So is is making sense in numbers and statistics and data? But when you look at what young people are going through mentally and stressing about how they're going to survive every day with bills piling up and, and the day-to-day -day living, you know, that comes with the day-to-day -day living, I think that that really is taking a toll on this particular administration. You know, when Donald Trump was in office, quote-unquote, this is all you hear from, you know, a lot of my peers. When Donald Trump was in office, we was up, bro. You know, when Donald Trump was over, I had money in my pocket. So it, it becomes a running stigma that some people don't know the real cost that we had to pay in order for us to have this money in our pocket at that, that quote-unquote right. time. Um, so you really have to, like, sit down and break it down and have that uh, political science conversation with your friends <laughs> when you're really just trying to chill. Right. Um, but I think that that uh, that stigma of I had money in my pocket when Donald Trump was in office and right now when Joe Biden and Kamala Harris is in office um, I'm down I'm broke and chicken costs ten dollars you know so well the crazy thing about that is one of the reasons why we all had money in our pocket is because of the pandemic so you know when they were handing out dollars and they were sending you that check <laughs> then yes people had money in their pocket and yes you could the other significant thing that i think people forget is that if you were a member of the gig economy or a freelancer and you lost your job you could get unemployment which mm -hmm. you can't do normally mm -hmm. so those were some of the reasons and I, I i can see where people would think that because i was going out um during the pandemic and I would see people sitting up in, you know, the restaurant <laughs> and I would be like, it seems to be a lot of people eating out these days, mm -hmm. what's going on? I think there was that feeling because the government was handing out more money and we know that there are things like uh, some of this guaranteed income that they have in certain states. One of them uh, was Washington DC, not a state, but still, mm -hmm. um, that when people <laughs> were given money, that you know struggling low income folks were given some money they actually uh some of them not all of them did well with that because they just needed a lift yeah that part so i can understand that frustration when it comes to young people but i also think that sometimes there's a sense of i i, I mean i i kind of understand where, where y'all are at because my feeling is that Yes, I've learned through this position, through being here at Word, there are a lot of options. It's connecting people to the options. It's connecting them to the resources. It's making sure that you can get to a grant. So there's a grant, but how do you get to it? What paperwork yeah. do you need? What documentation? Do you need an LLC? Can you do it as a sole proprietor? Can you start a program at your school? And how did somebody walk you through all that? Because if you know anything about dealing with government, federal, city, state, it's always a bunch of paperwork. It's always <laughs> a bunch of documentation. And I think those things can be de uh, 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 debilitating for people who are interested in accessing those resources. So that's part of the problem. Um, but is there something else that would resonate for you? Obviously, the economy resonates for everybody. Are there other it's things that factor. they need to do? Are there other things that they need to do to make themselves more viable to young people? Um, that's a great question, Tanya. Um, I know the focus right now is on the economy. Um, I do think that because when it when it comes down to Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, I just really feel like they haven't showed up in a way. Um, for us as black people, like they said that they were going to do as far as getting that black vote. So I think right. when it comes down to having that conversation um, of the black vote and then pushing so hard to grab the black vote, pushing so hard, hey, we can get our first 
um, black woman vice president, you know, first woman president, I mean, vice president and a black uh, woman vice president at the same time that really got a lot of us going especially progressive women you know we, they got a lot of us going so we were like hey this could be the ticket this could be the forerunner and I feel like they haven't showed up in those spaces um, and I think that that's also has been um, disappointing to a lot of voters because they haven't showed up in those spaces as far as being as progressive as they said they were going to be um, taking stands that they said they were going to uh, take um, so I think that that has hurt a lot of people um, as far as trusting them and then going into this war and Joe Biden sending buku amounts of money over there. It's like, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. What You said you were going to go, you was going to give us this, she was going to give us that, the money was going to go here, the money was going to go there. I mean, he did shout out the HBCUs, you know, he did give a little money to the HBCUs. I'm a, I'm a graduate of HBCU, so yeah, I see that. Um, but at the same time, um, you, you're giving buku amount of money to a war where, where you know you have people over here who really give a, really care about you know um, a crap about um, unhoused folks, people who really care about the environment and climate climate justice and things that are happening, um, people who really care about making sure that they get these student loans erased. You know, so when right. it comes down to uh, the next generation, we just thought that they, or my opinion, I felt we thought they were going to be a little bit more progressive on a lot of things that they said they were going to stand on, and they didn't stand on business like they said they were going to. But at the end so of the day, nobody else is stepping up to even run against them. And I think that's also so disappointing for us as, you know, the next generation, because we still have this cap on what age we can even be to run for president. You know, so even if we sit here and we talk about um, Joe Biden being 80 and Donald Trump 77, um, it's still like we still have to wait until 30 more years before us as millennials can really step up. Well, not even 30, what, 50 something more years? Because I feel like a lot I of us are already 30. 45 to be the president or something some so i think you're okay be then yeah so we in there so about 10 more years for sure <laughs> yeah so about 10 more another right. decade before a millennial can just jump out there and you know actually say this is what i want to do so picture going two more you know election cycles this one plus another one before a millennial can jump out there i think that would be a lot right I think you make some really great points um i think the big thing is when people feel that we are, as Black people, uh, the staunchest part of the Democratic Party. Our vote is usually always Democratic for many, really most of us. Mm -hmm. But we don't feel that we're getting what we should be getting. And mm -hmm. I think your, your, your point to them being in certain spaces, maybe they need to better connect with some of these grassroots organizations that Big are part. doing things on the local level and be visible and show up at, uh, whether it's William Way or uh, Mothers in Charge or, or some of any of these organizations that are doing positive things on a local level and make their presence known there, because I think that that would connect better um, and, and and that's a very good point. Mm -hmm. And then another thing, too, um, with, and then this can be very tedious, but with social media and the power of the World Wide Web, we see everything. Like, we see Joe Biden nodding off. We see, you know, him about to fall off a bike. You know, we see Kamala Harris, you know, really not on her, you know, Q's and P's and stuff like that. So when it comes down to uh, what everything is being shown it's like we cannot ignore what what you know the world wide web is showing us so i think that they also need to account take account in that social media cameras paparazzi everyone is after them everyone is looking for them to make a mistake everyone is looking for them to drop a pen in a quiet room so i think that they need to also take an account for that too well I think you made some great points. And unfortunately, we don't have more time today, but I'm going to give you a chance to do a quick shout out <laughs> Thank to you, uh, Eco Words and whoever is uh, your guest on Friday. Well, we're actually doing a pre-recorded episode on Friday, but still tune in. It's going to still air live at 10 a.m., um, so stay locked for that. But each and every Friday, we are live on 900 AM WRD with Eco Words starting at 10 a.m. with your girl POC. I appreciate you, Tanya. Thank you so much. I appreciate you back, POC. Thanks for coming on Reality Check. And we will be right back with more Reality Check after this break on Word. Peace. For more than a decade, Comcast has been committed to bridging the digital.